Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of The Suited Shootist. I haven't really done much gear discussion recently, and so I figured that I would kind of touch on that because I've gotten some questions, specifically like in the Filster Workshop, which if you're not part of, you really should be. I'll include the link down below in the description. Um, because I have several configurations of the Filster Enigma, and people are kind of curious as to why, because it's not a carry rotation. You know, I, I don't, I don't pick a gun based on how I'm feeling that day, but based on variety of factors that will dictate the specific pistol that I'm carrying. So let's take a closer look at my various Enigma setups. Uh, first off is going to be kind of, this is the, the OG. This was my first one that has arguably been the, the most heavily upgraded. Um, I'm still running the, uh, the stock leg leash on it. It works just fine for me. Um, it is the Enigma Gen 1 faceplate with a custom blue Paisley Dark Star Gear Orion 34 length and the sport belt. Um, if you are going to be carrying exclusively in a traditional kind of above the waist configuration. Uh, I think the sport belt is really worthwhile. I did a whole video on that that I'll include in the link down below as well. Um, this is my optimal carry gun. This is the most heavily modified of my carry pistols. So this was a stock Gen 5 Glock 19 that the frame has been to boresight. It's got a striker control device on it, as does my other uh, Glock 19, uh, milled for a dot, which is currently a Swamp Fox uh, Liberty. Still serving me just fine. Um, I will likely be looking at some other options, but that's simply because my contact at Swamp Fox has ventured out to kind of do his own thing, and I'm very much interested in supporting my friend's endeavors. So stay tuned. There's probably going to be something to come on that. Uh, Control-wise, I went with an Overwatch uh, Polydat trigger. Um, no real good justification for that one. I wanted to try a flat face trigger and see if it did anything for me. Uh, the trigger upgrade that I did do on this that really helped improve my shooting was the Ghost Evo Elite disconnector with the over travel stop shaved way down gives this much more of kind of a rolling double action type uh, stacking trigger, which I've come to realize I vastly prefer to the traditional striker take up wall press through because that wall was contributing to a pretty nasty hitch um, in my trigger press. So um, Polydat trigger, Evo Elite disconnector, and a, uh, a, a an old style single-sided Vickers slide stop. Because for me personally, when I'm doing my reloads, I do prefer dropping the slide with my support hand thumb. Um, this is my training, my primary training pistol. This is what I shoot matches and competitions with, stuff like that. And all things being equal, this is what I prefer to carry uh, if wardrobe and circumstances allow. However, as the Rolling Stones said, we can't always get what we want. And so sometimes compromises have to be made. So, moving from this trying to maintain as much continuity as possible, the next configuration that I've got is going to be, again, Dark Star holster, uh, you know, regular faceplate. This one on a regular belt is my SIG 365X. Um, so it's the, the short muzzle, the short barrel, and larger grip frame on this one. Uh, this has the regular belt on it. Mostly because this allows me to flex between conventional uh, above the belt line as well as deep carry. With the sport belt, um, when I deep carry, I typically will do that when I'm running like a tucked in shirt but no jacket or anything like that. Um, and so that means that this whole assembly is being worn around my midsection over top of my shirt. 
and the sport belt is just too wide and it starts creeping up above the belt line and it, it's it's visible so this i'm able to keep the whole rig uh kind of you know down below the uh you know down below the the line of my trousers and everything is able to ride now i said consistency for two reasons number one this also has a boresight frame on it so the overall grip and index of the pistol is fairly consistent with my glock 19 and from the factory, the 365 series has much more of a stacking double action style or double action feel trigger pull. So the trigger between these two is relatively consistent. Um, now, you might think that this just is where it stops, right? Because this is small enough that I can, I can conceal this a little more discreetly than the Glock, and especially with the, uh, the Mag Guts uh, inserts, which I'm going to be getting, you basically get 14 plus 1 in this thing, so the capacity is effectively the same. Um, but, again, here's the consideration. These Boresight frames are textured. Um, and the texture of the frame, as well as the right angles on the optics, still put some wear and tear on my clothing. And this is especially true when you're looking at uh, like deep concealment because the pistol is now sandwiched between the fabric of your shirt and the fabric of your pants. And um, I wear some nice clothing. And especially the way I buy my clothing, um, you know, I shop a lot of consignment. So, you know, for dress shirts, I'm typically not paying you know, more than 20 to 50 bucks for a shirt if I really want it. But they're not easily replaceable because if I were to just go and buy them at MSRP, they're two, three, four hundred dollars shirts. Um, and so there are times when I want something that is going to be a little bit more forgiving on my wardrobe. And that is where this last one comes in. Um, again, Paisley Dark Star holster regular Enigma faceplate, and this is my LCR-22, and this is pretty much bone stock. The only thing that I did to this is uh, I put a set of Eagle Secret Service Rosewood grips on it, um, mostly because the factory grip as well as the Hogue Bantam grip, I like the profile of them. And I actually prefer the Bantam grip because I'm not wild about finger grooves. Um, I I've actually really like the errands that are on my Smith & Wesson J-frame, but you can't get those anymore. Um, but if I'm going to pocket carry this, for pocket carry, I vastly prefer smooth, uncheckered wood grips because there's enough... You know, this is not like a polished, uh, smooth surface. There's a little bit of texture to it. And so even... You know, it's kind of kind of clammy right now. Um, so even with, you know, a little bit of, of, of sweat on the hand, this still sticks in the palm relatively nicely. Um, but I prefer the smooth profile because it doesn't stick in a pocket. And uh, the same holds true for when it's kind of sandwiched in between your clothing. There's not a sharp edge on this thing. So this is far more forgiving on my wardrobe than either of the semi-autos. So uh, if I'm looking for something where, you know, it's a social engagement where I really need to be incredibly discreet about the fact that I'm armed and it is a very low risk profile type of event, you know, I'm going over to like a friend's barbecue or something like that. This is probably what's coming along with me. This is almost exclusively a deep carry gun for the same reasons. Um, and so, aside from that, the beauty of the Enigma system is that it allows me, regardless of which gun I'm carrying, to keep it in the same position at the same height, so that that way, if, God forbid, I need a gun, my hand always goes to the exact same place, I know what I'm grabbing, and it's going to be there. Because, it's the other challenge, is with some of the consignment shopping that I do, the rise of my pants, while I have a preference, is not always... Um, ideally where I would like it because the channel ain't doing well enough that I can have a fully custom wardrobe yet. <laughs> so um, like and subscribe, help me get there. That'd be awesome. But point being is brand to brand, the rise on, on pants and trousers is going to vary. 
And so regardless of if it's a, you know, a 9, 10, 11 inch rise or even some of my, uh, my, my European brands that are, are, are a lower drop than that, um, I can still keep the gun in the same place and I don't have to worry about it. So that is what I've got specifically for the Enigma. But what I think I'm going to do in the next couple of, of weeks is I haven't really discussed my EDC lately. Um, there've been some changes and modifications to it. And while it's certainly not a cookie cutter where this is what I always carry, um, I think I'm going to touch on kind of my, my various loadouts and the logics behind it. So if you have any questions on the Filster Enigma, please put those down in the comments. I want to hear about that. And if you have any other uh, gear related questions, of course, throw that down as well. And aside from that, I hope everybody has a fantastic week. Stay dangerous and stay sharp.